energy forecast for Thursday, August 1st. Okay, we're in a brand new month, brand new life lesson, brand new vibration. We got a lot going on. So I am going to encourage you to take a listen to the August energy forecast. Those zodiac forecasts are coming at you here as well for you to check out your sun, your moon, your rising for the greater, grander picture on what August's energy shifts are actually going to mean for you. We are coming into this brand new month under the influence of the moon in her rulership in cancer energy. Now, yes, we are all up in the fields. Once again, we're having a little bit of a flashback to cancer season, but because we're in Leo season, there's much more optimism. There's a lot more positivity. We are not as anchored in looking back to the past as we now are pivoting to look towards the future. But in typical moon in cancer fashion, we're looking for comfort. We're looking for familiarity. We're looking to keep things tried, tested, and true. We're a little bit introverted. We are all up in the feels, but we're also putting into perspective what our feels are now indicating that we need to do, that we need to pursue. We've already done the bulk of the purging, of the releasing, of the ending, of the closures, and the closer that we get to the new moon in Leo energy, we are going to definitely feel the pivot pulling our attention away from dwelling on the past and anchoring it into the present moment as we start building towards our future goal visions and dreams so there are nine different aspects taking place here today eight of them are going to involve the moon the moon in rulership in cancer energy going to make a very tough interaction with pluto pluto is the great transformer he is retrograde in this aquarius energy highlighting for us the power struggles within where it is that the old version of self is at the new version of self where it is that our ego self is at our higher self where it is that our inner realm is conflicting with our outer realm and where it is that we need to kind of flip the script boss up stand in our power stand in our control to take the initiative initiative to actually improve not only our inner dialogue, our inner narratives, our emotional disposition, but improve the physical world around us. The small little pieces, if you will, that snap together, that make the greater, grander whole. The moon interacting with Pluto is going to intensify the not so nice thoughts and feelings. It's going to intensify a lot of the heaviness, a lot of the weight that we experience through cancer season. Of course, it's not supposed to feel good. Of course, we don't want to be in this situation, but it is necessary for us to reflect on where it is that we were at some of those fears, those doubts, those insecurities, where we can flip the script, start empowering ourselves to make a major shift in our mental plane, in our heart space. Again, supporting the pivot, pulling away from crying over spilled milk of the past and get a little bit excited and inspired on what we want to build and create for our future selves. The moon is then going to sextile, beautiful interaction, with Mercury. Mercury is the ruler of the mental plane. He rules over information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury is also in his rulership in Virgo energy. So the moon is in her rulership in Cancer. Mercury is in his rulership in Virgo energy. Yes, he is slowing down as he approaches his retrograde. However, this is a sextile. This means that our heart and our head are on the same page. Even more than that, Mercury being in this Virgo energy has us focused on the smaller details of our inner dialogue or inner narrative, how that has essentially created and manifest current situations that we're currently in. It's helping us to kind of focus in, have that laser vision focus on the issues, on the problems, especially where we were holding on to dead weight back in cancer season. This is a sextile. This is a nudge in the right direction. This is us understanding that we have to use our emotions and our intuition, moon and cancer, while listening to our logic, practicality, rationale coming from Mercury being in Virgo energy. Now, this is going to align our heart and our head for sure. And if you find yourself in a situation to be having some heart to heart conversations with the people with the world around you, this is really going to provide a matter of fact conversation supported by some deep emotions. So there is a level of sensitivity there 
from the moon being in cancer energy. However, the matter of fact, spit in the truth based off of evidence is coming from Mercury in Virgo. So it is a very good jam. It is a good blending of energies. It's putting us in the right perspective. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, who is now retrograde in Aries energy. Now, this is a beautiful interaction because, first of all, we didn't have Chiron retrograde through cancer season. He was direct. Now that he's retrograde, we're taking a good look inward. We're taking a good look at our mental health, at our emotions. We're taking a good look to identify the wounds. While Chiron is retrograde, we are more apt to kind of deal with the issues head on. We're not running. We're not hiding. We're not trying to sweep them under the rug. We want to grow. We want to heal. We want to improve. And we're tackling it with a warrior type of spirit. So the moon kind of interacting with Chiron is highlighting for us where it is that we have made major breakthroughs, especially in comparison to where it is that we were at in cancer season. Again, reminder, we did a lot of inner child healing work. We did a lot of healing work revolving around the mother role, the nurturing role. Of course, our family situations have changed. There was a little bit of, let's call it familial dysfunction highlighted in cancer season. It was very heavy. It was very weighted, but we've grown. We've healed. We've detached and disconnected from that dead weight and we're feeling much lighter and brighter because of it. Again, highlighting for us where it is that we are in our power to heal, to grow, to fix, to repair a lot of the issues that we weren't comfortable in tackling back in cancer season. So the moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. He's in Gemini energy again, a little bit scattered with the energy and attention because there's a lot of options for us at this point in time. There's a lot of opportunities for us to grow, for us to improve, for us to build something new. The Gemini energy has us a little bit divided on what needs our time, energy, and focus the most. And so Mars, although he is intellectually aggressive, again, kind of planning and strategizing and weighing the pros and cons of some of the situations and circumstances that we're trying to kind of figure out whether we want to pursue or not, he's making a lot of progress in the vision, let's say, in the researching, in the exploration of the shoulda, coulda, wouldas of what could be. But we're not really seeing a whole lot of, let's call it, major moves being taken. Now, the moon interacting with Mars, this is a boost to our motivation. This is a boost to us feeling excited and inspired about this new chapter. Again, we are really moving forward. We're looking forward. We're trying to strategize for futuristic goals, visions, and plans. This is just a beautiful energy for us to recognize that we're actually passionate about a particular goal. We're actually excited to bring something new to life. This is a supporting energy. Emotionally speaking, the moon in Cancer needs us to be building a solid foundation foundation of emotion. Mars needs us to kind of be hyped up, if you will, motivated, determined, inspired, excited, fueled up to kind of see this transitional phase through. So this is a good vibe that is going to definitely work in our favor. Just as we're making some progress, though, we do have to kind of understand that those dark force energies are going to creep in, especially seeing as the moon in Cancer is going to get in the boxing ring square off with the north node in Aries energy. So I kind of look at it like this. The moon in Cancer, typically speaking, likes to look back at the past, likes to hold on to the past, doesn't really like to, let's say, really concentrate on the future so much. That North Node is all about the future. We have no want, need, or desire to look back. We have no want, need, or desire to kind of hold on to the dead weight that we've already identified or blocking the progress in us being able to move forward. Now, we've been lucky with the Moon in Cancer thus far just because we're not as attached to the past as we were in Cancer season. However, this particular interaction is highlighting the growing pains. It doesn't come easy with the moon and cancer for us to kind of pivot away from the past. And so this particular interaction is going to highlight just as we've been building in these energies in the vision, in the goal, in the dream of the future. Suddenly now we're getting stage fright 
we're getting cold feet. The moon in cancer is like, whoa, that is way too much for me to have to do, for me to have to process right now as far as moving on and moving forward goes. I'm going to just stand still at this present moment. I don't want to think that far ahead. The North Node in Aries energy, of course, very focused on the future, focused on where we have to grow and heal and boss up and take control and be accountable for our own damn selves, let alone the realm of reality in which we're creating, of course, wants us to think too far ahead. This is why we have the square. We're butting heads at this particular juncture. We're going to be illuminated to where it is that, again, we're overwhelmed with the thoughts, with the ideas, with the notion of actually moving on and moving forward. We're not going to sit in that funky energy for too long. The moon is going to make a positive interaction with the sun. So anytime that the sun and the moon are interacting, we're going to have a light bulb moment. There's going to be a new level of awareness. There's going to be a realization on what we want, what we need, what we desire. So again, a reminder, the sun shining a bright light in Leo energy is sh showing us what our heart needs us to do, what our soul, what our spirit needs us to pursue, where we need to be bold and brave and courageous to put ourselves out there, to take a risk, to kind of break away from the same old, same old and try something new. The moon in Cancer, yep, again, very resistant to making those changes very overwhelmed with all of those thoughts, with all of those ideas. However, we're open-minded enough to not run away from this present moment, from the futuristic goal, vision, and dream that we're trying to conjure up and just, you know, kind of go back to the past. We're not doing that. We're holding our space. We're holding our ground, so to speak. We're not running. We're not hiding. We're also not running towards the future anytime soon with this moon in Cancer. And so the realization here is that the sun that rules over our life force energy, hyped up and excited for futuristic progress. The moon in Cancer is like, okay, I can get on board with being excited, being inspired, but I'm not willing to do anything about it just yet other than to percolate on these particular ideas. We're recognizing the inspiration, the excitement, the motivation that needs to kick in before we're going to be able to take action and make moves to actually make some progress. The moon is then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Leo energy. So this, again, we've had some major, I'm going to say, revelations of the heart space. We realize what we need to change in our physical realm, where routines, relationships, money matters are concerned in order to provide us with happiness, with joy, with pleasure, with safety, security, and stability. We know what we need to do but we're not ready to do it. We're not feeling confident enough to do it yet. We're not feeling safe and secure and supported enough to do it yet. And again, the moon in Cancer, again, not running away from these futuristic wants, needs, and desires, but also not ready to throw down, not ready to start building towards what we actually have to be doing. The moon is then going to semi-square Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. Another instance where we're actually creating more anxiety, more confusion than there needs to be. Normally, we have Uranus bringing a sense of clarity. But because the moon in Cancer energy is kind of all clenched up right now, again, huge, making huge progress by not running back to the past, but also just holding our ground, just standing in this present moment, just holding this particular space is very, very overwhelming, emotionally speaking, because the old hasn't quite died yet and the new hasn't quite anchored in. And so Uranus bringing this aha moment, bringing these epiphanies, bringing this, I'm going to say, perspective of where it is that we could switch things up, change things up in our physical realm in order to create a different result it's just too much energy. There's too much going on in our central nervous system. We're not feeling safe and secure and stabilized. And so again, we start kind of talking ourselves out of some of the good plans that we've had, some of the good ideas that we've had, because again, we're just not comfortable in making any moves, making any progress in these futuristic goals, visions, and dreams. The last thing that we have going on here today is Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger in this Gemini energy is going to be sextiling, beautiful interaction with that north node in Aries energy. This is going to help us just kind of chill out, 
just kind of give us permission again with the moon and cancer we're giving ourselves permission to not have to make moves okay we're like okay you're not comfortable with doing that are you comfortable with at least giving yourself permission to move into la la land to think about what could be to think about goals to think about dreams the moon and cancer is like yes okay I'm good on thinking about it. Just don't ask me to do anything about it right now. I'm not ready. So Mars is like, okay, let's get real. Let's get serious about what we could be doing, what we want to be doing, what we're being called to do. This is a highlight on where it is that we're now building, cultivating the fire, the spark, the flame within us to actually pursue our goals to actually get excited about the potential of where it is that we could end up, where it is that there is this aha moment on what we need to do next. So this is a supporting energy. This is a, let's call it a huge thumbs up, okay, to our insecure selves right now that guess what? We're doing good in the la la land. We're building towards a goal, vision, and dream. We are building the vision piece by piece within us and we're actually building in excitement. We're actually building in inspiration on what could be when we're ready to take action, to make moves, and to actually see some progress here in our physical realm.